like Sunil Bora, ED and Group CFO at Minna Industries, in fact, is on the show with us to really talk about which way the business is headed. Sunil, hi, morning. You know, uh, the big question is, uh, how is it that you're assessing the impact of slowdown uh, in Motown? Because, you know, we've been seeing month after month, the auto majors are struggling with their sales volumes, and that's bound to impact you guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you are right that in the last uh, quarter after the the Diwali season which was not so good, uh, there have been some more headwinds uh, in terms of uh, be it the NBFC issues or the high cost of owning a car via higher insurance or few other regulatory norms come ticking in. So the demand has been a bit muted and we expect that uh, to continue in a couple of more quarters uh, until uh, mid of this year. Uh, post elections we are uh, confident that the demand should pick up uh, backed with uh, uh, definitely that as we all know euro 6 norms is going to tick in and prior to that uh, we do expect uh, a sort of buying because once the euro 6 norms kick in there will definitely be a price impact and uh, whenever we have earlier also transitioned from euro 3 to euro 4 we have seen that similar kind of uh, pre uh, buying uh, happening uh, prior to the change of the norms when the cost really ticks up and as you rightly said, the, while the, there has been a pressure in the industry overall, uh, we have been uh, also not insulated. Uh, if my customer is under pressure, definitely that customer uh, pressure is definitely going to come to us. But we have a multi-pronged strategy. How do we handle that uh, pressure? The first, obviously, uh, we continuously work with our uh, OEMs uh, customers that how do we bring down the cost of production? How do we upgrade our products? Uh, how do we give newer uh, products uh, and also how do we bring increase the kit value of our existing offering so that definitely adds uh, to the top line in addition to that what helps is that uh, addition of newer products uh, that uh, helps in terms of uh, getting uh, increased kit value so that again adds to our top line and to our bottom line and third which is a sort of an insulation for us is our sort of a mix as you rightly said a little while back is two wheeler to uh, four wheeler segment our split is uh, broadly uh, equal, 47% to 53%. So that also helps in terms of insulating uh, any sort of uh, sharp moves in a particular segment. As we have seen in Q3, uh, four-wheeler segment did not do as good as uh, two-wheelers. So because we being present in both the segments, that also helped uh, a bit. So these three, I think, strategies all together, uh, we are confident that going in future, we will definitely be able to outperform. And our target has been very clear that whatever OEM industry grows, we have to grow 1.5 to 2x of that. And that is all backed on increased kit value, uh, newer offerings and upgrading of our uh, products. But if the market is contracting, that could have an impact on your capacity utilization. If capacity utilization remains low, that could have an impact on your profitability. So whereas I understand that your primary objective is to gain more market share, move towards value addition, but there is a very basic business which you cannot, yeah. uh, which you are still doing. And if that business slows down, what happens to the next two quarters? Yeah. No, so there definitely is a, is a pressure, uh, but demand is there. We are not seeing that kind of increased demand which you are expecting in double digits and all, but demand is there. It is not that market is in a, uh, a deep negative trajectory. So demand is there. Only thing is what uh, your point has been that whatever demand we are expecting in terms of double digit growth, that double digit growth has come to a single digit or maybe low single digit in some of the sectors. But having said that, as I little while uh, ago mentioned that uh, our strategy is not only to sort of cater to our existing uh, customers, definitely we work continuously to increase our pie or the size of the cake as we call. On top of it, we also are working in terms of adding newer products that it straight away adds to top line. Like you would have observed, in the last quarter, we have announced addition of uh, two-wheeler uh, plant alloy wheel uh, in uh, Maharashtra. We are uh, putting up a new sensor plant. We are putting up a new uh, uh, controller plant. So all these things put together definitely adds straight to the top line. And uh, that helps us insulate that kind of pressure on the existing business as well. Right. Okay. You know, wanted to just understand, uh, since we're talking about the slowdown, Sunil, considering, you know, you have presence across categories and your business uh, is mostly split between two-wheelers, four-wheelers and three-wheelers as well. Where is it that you're seeing maximum slowdown? Which uh, part or yeah. leg of the industry would you say is worst hit? 
I think as we all know in the last uh, quarter, uh, the biggest pressure would have been uh, on the passenger vehicle segment while two wheeler actually did little better and so was uh, three wheelers. Uh, so that was uh, in the last quarter but uh, coming in this year, the demand has little bit uh, improved. In fact, uh, Q4 we are expecting to be actually better in terms of our uh, revenue and profitability marginally compared to the Q3. So things are looking little better. But uh, we are not expecting a significant bump up uh, as uh, we all know that our customers whom you also directly talk to, we definitely don't want to second guess them. And uh, there has been a clear message that uh, in the first quarter and the second quarter of the fiscal, uh, we are not expecting a significant bump up. But post uh, middle of this year, uh, we do expect things to improve uh, much from here. Um, let's also delve into your numbers. There was a strong Q3 show. Do you think that that is sustainable? Uh, you seem very confident on the overall demand, etc. So, in light of that setup, do you believe that this kind of attraction can continue? Because what we're gathering from the space is that, you know, it, there is, there has definitely been a slowdown. There are multiple headwinds. No, absolutely, you are right. Uh, there are headwinds, uh, and uh, if you see our uh, Q3. Q3, we have been able to deliver 39% revenue growth uh, backed with both organic and inorganic uh, growth. Even if we were to exclude the inorganic part, our base business, if I see on apple to apple basis on Q3 versus Q3, our revenue was uh, almost 20% positive. And there is a little bit of difference, if, if I may say so, compared to when we see the auto majors versus the auto component industry. Uh, while we do see the auto majors growth in terms of uh, vehicle numbers or in terms of whatever new launches etc for a company like us we are when we are when you see the auto component sector while we do have our existing products what works plus for us is a getting upgrading our existing products and also addition of new products because addition of new products straight away adds to your uh, existing product line and that gives a significant uh, jump to the uh, volumes and that we have been very clear in terms of uh, our organic and inorganic approach in organically, we have been adding few products. In organically, as uh, you would have uh, observed, we have recently, last week only, uh, announced the acquisition of Harita Seating Systems. So that again is a thousand crore plus uh, revenue company. So which definitely will uh, add uh, from uh, next fiscal year, and uh, that will be merged into Minda Industries uh, as part of the deal which we have announced last week. So to get closing comments, we all know the auto numbers and how auto numbers were there for the month of Jan. Um, we don't have the Feb number, I, but looking at the car discounts, I don't think there would be a huge improvement. Now, this year, a lot of auto companies will be forced to liquidate their stock because of new emission yeah. ROMs, which means that they would first like to sell their existing stock, which is in their uh, factory or which is there lying at a dealer end. What impact do you think that could have on back-end, uh, you know, back-end component yeah. providers like yours? Because this is a special situation. It has never happened in the past that in six, nine months, they'll have to clean up everything. No, so you are right. Uh, while uh, the producers of uh, OEMs have to clean up their inventories, you are 100% right. But as I uh, mentioned a little while back, that once we meant go into the Euro 6 norms, the cost of vehicle itself will go up by 10 to 15% depending on model to model. While petrol may have less impact, diesel might have a little more impact. And Indian market, as you all know, is a price sensitive market. While uh, I can't comment on what uh, the discounts will be offered or will there be need to offer a discount to liquidate the inventory, uh, we are very positive that being that price sensitivity, actually there may be a pre-buying which may help liquidate the stocks of the, all the OEMs and hence uh, the better half, uh, the second half uh, we are expecting to be much better than the first half. Appreciate your time. I, uh, Newton, thank you for sharing and very candidly uh, speaking about what's happening to your company and what's happening to the sector.